Hey guys, welcome back to another DIY tutorial. So today we are going to be cutting and sew this dress that you see me putting on. I found this style on a Pinterest and I was just joking. <laughs> okay, I post it on my community post. Gosh, guys, I didn't know how serious you guys are sometimes. So I got a lot of yes from this style. That's okay. And of course, I love this the dress. So I have to go ahead to make it. So I got the fabric. So here we are, we're going to recreate this style now and um, if this is something that you are interested in, keep on watching this video. Give the video a thumbs up if you enjoy watching it, if you learn something from the channel and don't forget to subscribe and turn on your post notification if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, okay? So without further ado, let's go into the cutting table right now. So here is the fabric that I'm going to use. All this fabric you're seeing yes we're going to be using it all so this is the main fabric okay this is the main jeans so the name of this fabric is called sunray okay sunray i'm putting the spelling there so in case if you go to the market you don't know which one to take please pay attention to the fabric the fabric stretch both ways horizontally and vertically okay and this sunray fabric has two types there is a fake one and there is original one okay so this is the original one i got and when you are getting it look these edges okay i don't know if you can see it very well look at the edges this is how the edges look like okay and um you're going to pay attention to this and then secondly from these edges where they are going to cut it out when they they're going to cut out you will notice that the fake one has thread coming out from there but why this particular one it's completely elastic it doesn't have any frame okay so please don't fall in a victim and the yard of this fabric is 4500 naira okay that i got and then this is the lining that you're going to use so we need lining to line in the the dress of course when you look at the neckline it doesn't have any stitching from the neckline so there is a lining so it's fully lining okay so and you're also going to tell them to give you a last a stretchable lining okay my lining is also stretchable so i got two two yard to be on a safe side because i wasn't sure how many how many years to get so just get two yard if you have the money so any leftover you can still use it to do something else okay so here is my duchess fabric i will advise you to use a uh, duchess because duchess is going to give you that stand structure uh, structure so i have five yard here uh lucky for me i have this material here before i got this fabrics okay yeah so we are going to start now for drafting now the pattern so i have treated a tutorial on how to draft a busy body block on my channel if you haven't seen it you can check it out so if you know how to draft a busy body block then you can skip this part but if you don't know how to then stay tuned for here so that you learn how to draft a busy body block okay uh here i've co co uh, created my starting point my shoulder line and uh, the center front as a guideline okay so the first thing i'm going to do here i'm going to be marking my shoulder measurement i divide my shoulder measurement by two which gives me seven inches i just mark exactly seven inches right there at the starting point so now i'm going to start now by taking my vertical measurement uh, from my shoulder to my chest line is 8.25 okay and i will be repeating this line here so that i'll have a straight line always repeat your line twice so that you have a straight line okay and the next measurement i will be taking now is my shoulder to my bust line so from my shoulder to my bust line is 9.5 inches okay and also i will be repeating this line twice to have a straight line So the next measurement I will be taking here is my shoulder, from my shoulder to my underboss. From my shoulder to my underboss is 12.5 inches. So if you don't know how to get your, your shoulder, uh, get your underboss, if you know where your boss point is, mark three inches below, you will get your underboss measurement, okay? So uh, right here, this is my underboss line. And the next measurement now is going to be from my shoulder to my waistline. From my shoulder to my waistline is 16 inches okay so i'm going to be marking 16 eight inches right here so i will be repeating this line twice again so that we'll have a straight line 
and the next measurement is going to be uh, my from my shoulder to my hip line so find out where your hip line is place your tape from your shoulder to where your hip point stop okay and then mark it so mine is uh 20 24 so i'm going to be minus one inch from there at first i minus one inch away but i later added back because um what i didn't realize is that that straight material is stretchable okay so if you make it more shorter uh, when you are when you put it on it's going to be racing up okay it's going to draw back up so what you're going to do uh instead of marking exactly your hip point okay mark uh, uh at two inches to your where your hip line stop okay so and the my dress length totally is uh 32 inches so that is the length of my dress so to get uh, from your shoulder to your hip line please mark uh when you mark your hip line then add additional two inches to that measurement okay to avoid raising up when you put on the dress okay so here is my hip line and then the length of my ratio is going to be seven inches okay so right now i have done uh draft out my vertical measurement so the next thing now we're going to be working on the horizontal measurement so from my chest line here i'm going to repeat my uh half of my shoulder measurement which is seven inches here i'm going to repeat it okay so i'm going to repeat it so that i'll have a straight line connecting my armhole line so i have connected my armhole line so the next thing i will do here um i'm going to be um marking my quarter of my bust circumference mark quarter of your bust circumference minus one inch okay we are working with uh, a fitted dress okay quarter of your bust circumference minus one inch your your under bust quarter of your under bust minus one inch mine is 7.25 so i minus one inch so i have 6.25 here and then my waist is uh, seven inch i minus uh, one inch so i mark six inches okay so move on to my hip line my hip line quarter of my hip line is 10 inches and then I minus one inch, which gives me a nine. So I just mark it there. So right now I'm going to connect all this dot together to create my busy body blocks, okay? Sorry, my pencil is not uh, clear, but I'm going to make it, uh, I'm going to uh make the line visible in a few minutes okay but I let me just finish with all this first then i will correct my lines okay pardon me for this so move on to the upper part okay so i'm going to come to this line here from my armhole line i will be marking one inch for my shoulder slope okay mark one inch below then my neckline is uh, i'm using a 2.75 inches here divide your your round bust circumference by five you get your neckline okay so my neck my front neck depth i'm going to be using three inches okay so 2.75 by three inches if you notice the neckline is high okay so don't use more than that if you're on a bigger size divide your round bust circumference by four, by five and uh, whatever thing that gives you use it as your neck around uh, neck um your neck width okay so right now i've connected my neckline and also create my um, shoulder slope so now i'm going to find the midpoint between this line here okay so i divide it into two which gives me uh, 0 0.6 okay so from that point where i mark my 3.6 uh, sorry so from the point where i mark that my midpoint i'm going to mark 0 0.5 inch inward please don't make it more than 0 0.5 because if you make it more than that you're going to have a bulge at that your armhole area okay don't make it more than uh 0 0.5 inches okay so afterward i will just connect my armhole cu uh, cuff like so so i have gone ahead to brighten up the line so i'm just going to level this one my front pattern so basically my front pattern is ready so uh, i'm just going to go ahead to add my sewing allowance 0 0.5 inch sewing allowance okay please I will advise you don't add more than 0 0.5 inch so that you will not have um, a lot of uh, excess inside when you are about to use your lining to turn your dress in okay 
so i'm adding 0 0.5 inch all around here from my shoulder line and my armhole line yes so the part where i need to join my um my sleeves together my shoulder together and the lower part i added back the the one inch that i was supposed to add earlier okay and then i that is 1.5 inch below i added 1.5 inch below and then from the neckline also add your 0 0.5 inch below so that you turn your lining from here okay i hope all this explanation is uh, clear i hope you, uh, you are getting it so the next thing i'm going to do now i'm going to be drafting out my back pattern so i will be drafting out this back pattern off camera because there is no thing serious with this it's still the same process like i did to the front okay so the only difference here is the is going to be the armhole line i'm going to show you where the difference is here okay and then the neck depth also is different from the front so uh let me um uh, show you the difference between the front and the back pattern okay so the different from the front and the back the back has 1.5 inch neck the depth and then the front is three inches okay so i'm going to mark my 1.5 inches neck depth here from the back so here is my 1.5 inches here and then i'll get my french curve row to create my back neckline So I have gone ahead to draw out my uh, shoulder slope. So right now I'm going to find the midpoint from my uh, armhole line for the back. Okay, so where I marked that my 3.6 inches, I'm going to mark 0 0.25. Okay, so this is where the difference is, is for the back. The front, I marked 0 .0, 0 0.5 inch, but the back, I marked 0 0.25. All right, so right now I'm going to draw this line out so that you can see though the pencil is not that clear for you to see but i'm going to make it bold when i uh, use my marker okay so i'm creating my armhole curve right here so yeah so the next thing i'm going to do i'm going to get my my mark uh, my marker pen to make the line bold so that you will see the uh, what i did okay so I'm adding 0 0.5 inch joining allowance. So yeah, that is what I'm going to do. Uh, first of all, I need to make this line bold first. Okay. It's still not bold enough, but yeah. So I have gone ahead to correct uh, the line. So I have also gone ahead to add my sewing allowance like I did to the front. So right now, I'm going to start now by cutting out this pattern so my quick advice before we for move forward okay please this fabric that you are going to use to recreate uh, to recreate this dress is expensive all right if you are a beginner please try to watch this video very well pay attention to every process properly before you make any attempt of cutting it on that fabric because that fabric is expensive sunray fabric is expensive I don't know where the area you are, but for my own area where I am, a yard of that fabric is 4,500 naira, okay? So if you are a beginner, I will advise you not to rush into it unless you are sure of what you are doing, okay? So I hope you enjoy watching this video. If you do, please don't forget to give the video a thumbs up, okay? so my pattern is ready right now we are going to be working on the fabric so here is my fabric okay i'm going to take out my lining let me keep my lining inside i need to prepare this fabric so that i can cut it okay so i have uh, i tried to cut it uh while it's together as with the plenty yard it was disturbing so i just have to cut it to the size of my pattern okay so that is what i just did here and this is going to be easier for me to show you how I'm cutting out my uh, fabric or uh, yes, how I'm cutting out my fabric on my pattern, okay? So you're going to place, now I'm cutting out my back pattern first, okay? Just the way you see me doing, if you know that the fabric, the paper is not staying one place, just look for a heavy object and place it like this, okay? It's going to be easier for you to cut. So that is what I just did. And the beautiful part about this fabric is that you don't even need to iron it before you you cut it okay so it was very easy for me to work with 
Throughout this process, the only part where I iron is uh, the neckline. The rest of it, I did not iron it. So that is for you to know how beautiful this material is. So, yeah. So right now, I have done cut out my front and my back pattern. So this is, I'm going to use this pattern now. This piece is now to cut out my lining, okay? I'll be using it to cut out my lining. So I have cut out my lining, uh, placed the main fabric on top of my lining, and then I cut it out, okay? So this is what we have here. So the first thing I'm going to do right now, I'm going to get my, separate my lining from my main fabric, okay? So here is my main fabric. Let me keep my lining aside. I'm going to get my main fabric, the front and the back, okay? So this is the, this is the back pieces, okay? The, the right side is facing me up. And then the front pieces, the right side is facing down, okay? So you're going to place it the right side facing the right side. And then we are going to start pinning from the shoulder, okay? So if you're a beginner, this explanation is for you, okay? Place the right side of your fabric facing each other. And then the first place that you're going to stitch is on the shoulder, okay? So I'm going to pin the shoulder like so. So the next thing now, I'm going to do the same thing to my lining, okay? Place the right side facing the right side of the lining and then pin it from the shoulder. So what I'm going to do, I will head back to my sewing table. I will join it with 0 0.5 inch allowance, all right? I will be back. So I have done joined my lining and my main fabric shoulder to shoulder, okay? I made this separately, okay? So I will show you what I'm going to do. So the next thing I'm going to do now, the first place after joining the shoulder, okay? The shoulder to shoulder from the, the lining, so we're going to place your fabric right side facing the right side of the lining okay your main fabric and your lining places the right side facing the right side like you see me doing and then you're going to start by pinning from the neckline okay we're going to join from the neckline first after joining the shoulder together the first thing you need to do is to join the, sh the, the neckline okay So I have done pin my lining to my main fabric together from the neckline. Okay, as you can see, so I will go back to my sewing machine and join it with 0 0.5 inch allowance. So I have done join my lining to my main fabric now. So the next thing I'm going to do is to notch it. So you're going to notch it. Even if you are going to iron it, make sure you notch it first. So that by the time you want to iron it, the from the neckline is going to help relax it, okay? Don't skip this part. Make sure you notch the neckline. Then you can head back to the sewing machine, uh, ironing table and iron it. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do. So I have done iron it as you can see. See how relaxed the neckline is, right? So now let's uh, move to the next step. So the next step I'm going to do now is to, uh, I'm going to separate my main fabric. Please pay attention to see what I'm doing. Separate the main fabric and the lining. So here is my lining. My lining is the one below and my main fabric is the one above, okay? So now, uh, here is my, my main fabric that I'm working on right now, okay? So I'm going to arrange it proper so that the first thing we do here, after arranging it like this, I'm going to pin the side by side, okay? So the first thing you need to join first is the side. So we are going to close the side. So by doing this, it's going when you, fin you join them separately. When you turn your uh, your dress out to the uh, to the right side or the wrong side, you're going to see the inside is going to look so nice and clean. Okay. So I have done pin it. So the next, now I'll go back to my sewing machine and then I will be joining it with zero point five inch allowance. That zero point five inch allowance that I added while I was drafting my pattern. Okay. So let me run a quick uh, explanation on how I draft out my sleeves, okay? So uh, if you haven't seen the tutorial where I treat about a basic uh, slip pattern, a basic slip pattern, here, yeah, please check the link on the description box. So what I did here, I mark uh, 4.5 inches down for my slip cap height, the length 4.5, okay? From my shoulder tip to the length of my slip cap height is 4.5. And then from my shoulder tip to my elbow is 13 inches. 
So from that 13 inches, I marked four inches below. And at the end of the day, I noticed that it was too short. So uh, if you're working on, when you find your elbow line, mark five inches below instead of four, okay? To get your three quarter length, okay? So that is what I did. And then my sleep length, my original sleep line, uh, length is 20 inches. So I minus three inches away from my original sleeve length. So I'm going to be adding additional four inches back to that three inches that I minus to get my, my sleeve length, to complete my sleeve length, which is going to be the, the ruffles, okay? So, and then uh, I'm going to be adding back uh, five. I added five inches. It was too short. So in the, in the nearest future, I will be making it uh, seven, okay? So that I can have it exactly at the line. So now I divide my round elbow by uh, two, it gives me 4.5 and then I mark four inches there. Then for my three quarter, also the same thing, 4.5 and then I mark uh, four inches. So I minus 0 0.5 inch away from there, okay? So back to my slip cap height uh, line, I divide my bicep by two and I add one inch so that I, can, I was able to create my crown from my uh, sleeve, okay? So after uh, getting the circumference of my uh, sleeves, that is the round arm hole, then I, I minus 0 0.5 inch away from that. Okay, please, if you do not understand it, leave your comment below uh, or join the WhatsApp group. I will explain better. So right now, I'm going to fold my fabric so that I can place my pattern on it so that I can cut my sleeves. Okay, I hope you understood this uh, explanation proper. And uh, the next thing that I will just cut, I place the two fabric, okay? This, I uh, have a fabric placed on fold. This is uh, my two sleeves. So let me separate it so that you can see. So this is my two sleeve. I will go back to my sewing machine and join them, then I will be back. So I have done join my sleeves together, like uh, stitch it round. So the next thing I'm going to do now is to uh, join my sleeves back to my bodies. So by doing this, I'm going to get my sleeves, turn it to the right side, okay? Make sure you turn it to the right side and then you turn your dress to the wrong side, just the way you see me doing, okay? And then I'm going to pass it underneath like so and make sure I will join the part where the side seam, okay? The side seam of my sleeve and the side seam of my dress together. So those are the, uh, the points where you're going to use as a guideline. Also, make sure you notch your sleeve so that by the time you're going to join it to the shoulder, uh, the, the seam allowance on the shoulder is going to help guide you to place it in a proper way, okay? So I have done pin my sleeve to my body, so I will go back and join it with 0 0.5 inch allowance. So I have joined my sleeve to my body, okay? So the next thing now is to find the circumference of my uh, base of my dress and multiply it by 3. So here is my Duchess fabric, okay? So as I multiply it by three, it gives me 1010. So I'm going to use it to cut out a long rectangle from this um, Duchess fabric, okay? So I have cut out my long rectangle from the, uh, the Duchess fabric, okay? So the length I cut out here is 15 inches, okay? So I'm going to use 0 0.5 inch to join it back to my dress. So at the end of the day, I'm going to have seven inches remember that we're going to fold this fabric into two okay it's going to be fold into two but before we fold it into two i'm going to uh first of all join the the side okay let me show you what i'm going to do so you understand exactly what i'm talking about okay find the right side of your duchess fabric okay the right side facing the right side like this and then you're going to place it like this okay go back to your sewing machine to join it but i will advise you as a beginner make sure you pin your fabric down before you head back to the sewing okay so whatever thing i'm doing here i'm going to do the same thing to my sleeves okay divide the round circumference of your 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 sleeves of your three quarter length divide the round circumference of it from the sleeves and then you're going to uh, multiply it by three okay so the hair is my sleeves I, I I take the measurement of my sleeves here, okay, the rib side or the, the base side, and then I multiply it by three, and then I add additional four inches to that measurement, okay? So let me uh, take the measurement so that you understand what I'm talking about, okay? So the length of this, uh, this piece is right here, or the length of this rectangle is 28 inches. 
I divide the circumference of my uh, the base by three, and then it gives it gives me the twenty four inches. So I added additional four inches, and then the length I have here is fourteen inches. Like I said earlier, that in the future I'm going to make it longer than this because I use a fourteen. So at the end of the day, I have a um six inches because you have to fold it into two so i'm going to place it like this the right side facing the right side and then i'm going to pin it you need to join the side uh, together first before you make uh, before you uh, you fold it okay so that is what you need to do so i will go now and join it with 0 0.5 inch i will be back so i have done join the sleeve so as you can see i made a loose stitch here this is the the main uh, rough food I'm going to use for my dress, okay? I made a loose stitch here, two lines, okay? Make sure you make it two lines so that when you're going to make roach, it's not going to cut along the way, okay? So let me show you what I did to the main fabric. So after joining it like this, you're going to fold it like so. So make sure you pin it in case if you did not iron your pieces, okay? I did not have electric to iron, so uh, I just have to... Uh, find this tip like this this method so i pin the seam allowance on both sides like so and then i fold it like this so the next thing i will do now is to start pin this together okay so that i can go back to my sewing machine to create uh, a loose stitch that i will create ruffles for my sleeves okay so place it uh, the seam allowance facing each other properly and then you're going to pin this so once i'm done pinning this i will go to my sewing machine and then i'll make a loose stitch a double loose stitch okay so that i can create a ruffles for my sleeves so i have done uh create um make a loose stitch now okay it's a double loose stitch so right now we'll create a ruffles for my uh skirt uh the dress so i have well uh, also gone ahead to rush this this took me almost about 30 minutes to create the, uh, the ruches so I didn't put it on on the camera and so once you're done this is the quick and easier way for you to understand this uh, ruche you'll be wondering how are you going to get the exact um, circumference from the base of your dress right so this is what you're going to do just once you've done make that ruche take the circumference of the ruches and make sure it's exactly your hip circumference for example, my hip circumference is 40. So I make the ruche, I ruche it to the exact uh, circumference of my uh, hip line, okay? So that is what I did. And then now the next thing I'm going to do now is for us to uh, start joining our ruches back to the dress. So what you're going to do, please pay attention here because to be honest, I lose these uh, ruches plenty times because the way I went on, it was not uh, accurate. So make sure you mark the center front of your dress and the center back of your dress. And the same thing you're going to do, the same thing to your ruche, okay? Find the midpoint of your ruches. Find this, uh, the midpoint of the, there is a side and then the midpoint from the back. So once you find that, then you are going to now place it that's from that center point that you mark. To the center point of the back and also the center point from the front also to the center points of the uh, of the front okay in this way by the time you're going to uh, pin it round it's going to dis uh, distribute evenly okay it's going to distribute evenly you are not you're, you're not going to have stress maybe one side is fuller and the other side is not fuller okay so find a midpoint please that is why I'm taking my time here to show you and explaining this part. Don't skip this part because if you skip this part, you will not get, get it right because I know how many times I have lost this point to recreate it or to, re, to rejoin it together. Mark, find the midpoint from the side, the midpoint from the, uh, from the back and the midpoint from the front. So once if you do that, then you pin from those midpoint to a uh, point to point. So once you are done, to start pinning it round is going to be easy for you. And what I'm doing here, I'm first of all, I'm pinning, I'm going to stitch on the main fabric first before we work on the lining. So the reason why you need to first of all stitch the ruffles to the, your main fabric first is because you want to have an uh, invisible stitching, okay? 
you don't want a, a situation whereby after you finish you join the lining together with the main fabric and then you fix in your ruffles no it's not going to look professional you're looking at to get something that is going to look like ready-made okay that is what your your target is so to do that you need to fix your ruffles first to the dress before you uh, join your lining so for your lining don't worry i'm going to put you through on how you go about uh, joining the lining okay so remember this process that you did you find the midpoint of the uh, of your the center front and the back and the side okay so the same thing you're going to also do to the lining so i'm giving you a heads up so that you understand what you're going to do in few, uh, in, in the next step when you're working with the lining in case if you decide to skip the lining part so uh as you can see as i distributed as you can see the line is going evenly and there is no part that you see that is one side is more or uh, there is more excess than the other side Be is because we find the midpoint in every corner so you see everything now is lining equally no any one no one that is is, is excess than the other okay so please to get a nice finishing you need to follow the instruction for you not to mess up with your work because uh, girl i'm still telling you this fabric is expensive i was not even want to hear anything <laughs> okay so yeah so i have gone ahead to join my ruffles to my dress and also join the ruffle from the sleeves together you put it in like so and then you're going to stitch it okay so i hope i think you should understand this part that is the same thing i did to the main fabric okay so right now we are going to work on the lining i'm turning my my dress to the wrong side okay so that we can be able to work on the on how to fix in the, the the lining okay make sure your ruffles is inside okay don't let your ruffles come out make sure your ruffles is inside okay example if you know how to fix a jacket a, a sleeve to your blazer jacket this is the method that we're going to use if you know how to fix lining you know when you're making a blazer jacket it has lining and if you're facing the sleeves, you are also making imbue stitching. So this is the method I'm using, okay? Find the midpoint of your lining, just like I said, okay? And then the next thing that I'm going to do now is to get my lining, okay? So right now, I'm, I'm taking that from the right side. So the right side of my lining to the right side of my dress, please. I'm taking it from the seam allowance okay from the side seam allowance so that it can be easy for me to understand what i'm doing that is why i was talking about to find the midpoint so i'm zooming this closely so that you understand the point uh, this part okay the seam allowance to the seam allowance but it has to be the right side facing the right side okay so now i'm going to start now looking for the part where my midpoint is so the midpoint from the center front now to the midpoint of my uh, main fabric the midpoint from the lining the midpoint from the main fabric and then i pin and it has to be the right side facing the right side please if you don't understand this point rewatch this video okay rewatch the video so that you will understand this point then this is the second uh, side seam okay now the right side facing the right side of the side seam the lining and the main fabric okay so now i'm going to now look for the second midpoint from the back or the front whichever that i'm working with right now but make sure you're looking for the midpoint okay so once if you find it i have found my midpoint now so i'm going to place it now to the midpoint of the front or it, i think it could be the back <laughs> because right now i don't really know the part the the side i was working with either front or back i didn't know so yes yeah, so i just pin it now so right now i will start now by pinning this now and everything is not going to go even okay so i distribute it in a way that is going to be easy for me to work with so no stress at this point so after i was done pinning now i will go back to my sewing machine to join it with 0.5 inch allowance i started joining it at first i'm like no if i didn't join show you guys how i'm joining this part you guys are going to find it difficult so um now where you're going to turn it to the turn your main fabric outside is from the lining okay so you're going to create a space open like three inches okay 
make sure you stop stitch so make sure you stop stitch when you are going to open it so that by the time you're done stitching then you will turn it out from that part okay so right now i'm joining my lining to my main fabric please pay attention to my explanation if you do not understand it please rewatch it again if the speed is too much you have an option to play it back on a normal playback speed okay so i have done stitch my lining to my to my main fabric from the base so the next thing i'm going to do here i'm going to loose from one side of the lining okay so that i can bring back my my turn my my dress to the right side so that is exactly what i'm doing here honestly if you see this dress in person guys you will actually love it and i hope you follow follow the instruction if you follow the instruction you are also going to see it by yourself so can you see how beautiful this dress is it looks like ready made you know if person tell you that this dress is made here in nigeria you will not even believe it so the side are also gonna have to stitch out that part that i open and then yes that is it we have come to the end of this tutorial i hope you enjoy watching this video i hope you learned something from this channel today if you do please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and um subscribe to my channel if you're yet to do so and also help me share this video to reach out the people who may need to watch this okay so once again i want to say a very big thank you for watching and have a beautiful day have a beautiful morning afternoon evening wherever you're watching this video from and stay tuned for my next tutorial bye